fibromyalgia. <laughs> fibromyalgia. What? Now, I've been procrastinating making this video for quite a long time, and there are a couple of reasons for that. One is that it makes me kind of sad to talk about it. Two, this has been going on for so long, and doctors have not found anything on many, many tests and said, maybe there's nothing wrong with me and I got so used to being dismissed that sometimes I struggle to believe that there is anything wrong with me despite overwhelming evidence to suggest that I am not making all of this up. Disclaimer, these views are my own. The information is from reputable sources like the NHS website and a couple of fibromyalgia charities which I will link in the doobly. So fibromyalgia literally means pain in the nerves and fibres. Fibromyalgia is a long-term condition that causes pain all over the body. It's musculoskeletal but I also find that it causes quite a lot of nerve pain. It was not recognised as a chronic illness that causes disability until 1976. Because there's no evidence of inflammation um, in the body, the term fibrocytis, what? Yeah, fibrocytis, fell off fibromyalgia was taken on as the new term by the American Medical Association. Symptoms of fibromyalgia are many and varied. There is widespread pain, which is like the number one. I am always in pain. I am always in pain somewhere in my body, even if it's just my fingers. My hands, the other day, my hand felt like every joint in it had sort of shifted slightly and I couldn't hold things because it hurt so much. There's also an increased sensitivity to pain. There's extreme tiredness or fatigue. Now this is not the same as chronic fatigue syndrome, which is in itself a disability and a chronic illness, but it's not that. This is just chronic fatigue. Muscle stiffness, difficulty sleeping, also known as pain insomnia for those in the know and problems with mental processing, memory and concentration. This is known as fibro fog. I have been known to forget the word for basket in the middle of the supermarket and be standing there going, the, the thing, the thing, at my partner, who's then having to guess what I mean because I've just lost the word. Another one is that I call things that are liquids and I can't think of the name for them, sauce. And although I can laugh about that now, at the time when it happens, it's, it's horrible and it makes me feel really stupid. Headaches are another symptom, particularly migraines. If you, anything like me, when that happens, I have to lie in the dark room and listen to podcasts because I can't like look at anything or really have my eyes open. Sometimes I can feel one coming on and I can just about carry on functioning. There's another weird thing called multiple chemical sensitivity syndrome, which is kind of a symptom and side effect of fibromyalgia. And it's when you're really sensitive to odours, noise, bright lights, um, medications, and also food, sometimes, tastes. Um, and this happens to about 50% of people who have fibromyalgia, including me. It can also lead to IBS, which I'm so thankful I do not experience my stomach about the only bit of me that doesn't make complaints. Now, these things can be aggravated by changes in the weather, cold or drafty environments, hormonal fluctuations, that's a big one, stress, mental health problems like anxiety and depression, and overexertion. And when fibromyalgia kind of really gets going, when it's been dormant or less impactful for a while, we refer to that as a flare up. So if I say I'm having a flare up of my symptoms, that means that although I'm in pain pretty much all the time, in some way, big or small, it's really intensified. What causes fibromyalgia? Well, it's a good question because no one seems to know. Some people think that it's related to abnormal levels of certain chemicals in the brain, that it's to do with the way the central nervous system processes pain and carries it through the body. And if you want me to do a more specific breakdown of how neurotransmitters and all that kind of thing work, 
let me know. There's also some suggestion that pe some people are more likely to develop it than others, that it might be hereditary or genetic. In many cases, the condition seems to be triggered by a physically or emotionally traumatic event, an infection, an accident, the development of another disorder, and it's perfectly possible given I've got diabetes, hypothyroidism, anxiety, depression, and PCOS as well, that that could be why. Other things, giving birth, having an operation, relationship breakdown, and death. The death of someone that you know and love. They, these all could be triggering, to use that word. Anyone can develop fibromyalgia. It's thought to affect seven times more women than men, and it typically develops between the ages of 30 and 50, though it has evidenced here, it can affect children and the elderly as well. Estimates have been made that as many as 1 in 20 people could experience fibromyalgia to some degree, which is interesting because it's clearly quite a common disorder. However, it's not widely recognised by healthcare professionals to the extent that I once had a doctor tell me that he thought everyone had fibromyalgia to some extent and had I tried yoga. I wish I had just told him to get in the bin. There's no specific test necessarily to diagnose fibromyalgia outright. It is a diagnosis of elimination. So on one hand, it's really nice to know that I don't require immediate treatment for rheumatoid arthritis or lupus. However, it also leaves a lot of unanswered questions and sometimes feels like people, sometimes feels like doctors go, well, we can't work out what's wrong with you, so it's probably this. And when I have symptoms that don't fit fibromyalgia, it makes that diagnosis feel a little less firm in my mind. They look at you and say those four little words. You don't look sick. As great as that is, because no one wants to look sick, you feel sick. You're in pain all the time. You're so tired, you can't actually sleep or rest, but you also can't concentrate or sometimes it feels like your body is made of lead and you can't move. And to be told it's all in your head is horrible. In some ways I think that's as horrible as constantly being in pain, is to be told that people think you're making it up. So there's no cure for fibromyalgia. How people think they're going to cure something when they don't even know what causes it, I have no idea. There are, however, some treatments that help ease symptoms and make the condition easier to live with. These treatments tend to be a combination of medicine and psychological therapy. So antidepressants can help block some of the neurotransmitters. Painkillers help with the pain. I've been trying to get a referral to a pain clinic for so long now and I was just getting close and then coronavirus happened. Why, universe, why? Um, and talking therapies like CBT, which help with coping with living in constant pain. It's also been suggested that lifestyle changes and relaxation techniques. Yoga. When I was 13, I was hospitalised because of a very bad low blood sugar level episode because I'm also type 1 diabetic. I was rushed to hospital, I couldn't see, I had a like blinding headache and they were worried that it might have been, what's it called? I've forgotten what it's called. They were worried it was meningitis. It wasn't, however, I was in intensive care, they did a lumbar puncture and it was all scary, I don't remember half of it, I do remember being in a hell of a lot of pain and after that I started having heart palpitations, feeling very fatigued at school, especially during years 11 to 13. I used to have to go home, I had permission to go home or have a nap in the medical room because I would get so fatigued that I couldn't walk to my classes, I couldn't stay sitting up, I wasn't able, really able to verbalise. And those kind of issues have been drifting in and out of my life for years, all throughout university. Half the time I feel like I'm making it up because the pain is fairly low level, I just crackle my, crick my neck and get on with it. But some of the time I can't move, I can't get myself dressed, I can't shower, 
I can't feed myself. My partner has had to help me a hell of a lot over the last year. And even when we started dating, which was almost a year ago, I was using a walking stick. I was living in central London. I struggled to stay standing up. It was not a good time. So maybe in making this video, I'm ready to affirm for myself that it is a thing that I live with and it's real and it's a pain and a way of saying it to anyone else who thinks they might have it or knows they have it, been told they have it, has been diagnosed, that you're not alone, probably won't ever get better. Like, I know that. But life is still very much worth living despite it. So yeah. If you have fibromyalgia, leave a comment down below and let me know how that's going. Thank you for watching. I hope this is kind of explained what on earth fibromyalgia is and a little bit what it's like to live with it. If you like this video, give us a, a thumbs up. Excuse my hairband. If you want to know anything more about it, just drop me a Drop me a question. I hope you're well. I hope you're safe. I'm not going to talk about that thing that's happening outside. I don't really know how to end this video. Goodbye.